Hi friends, I am 37 weeks pregnant and I haven't recorded a yoga video for you yet. So here are my five favorite yoga practices uh, to use during pregnancy. And I've used all of them throughout, um, just with modifications, variations, whatever inspires you today. So the first one, uh, I've been to a lot of classes that aren't prenatal and a lot of folks will start in child's pose and for me I just no matter the props the belly just seems to get in the way <laughs> so I often will start just seated on my heels if that's comfortable for you you can take a few breaths in any seated position just sort of preparing yourself and if child's pose works for you that's great too just telling you this baby needs a little more space then even two or three bolsters can get me there. So find your seat, find your center, take a breath, maybe even hands on belly. Taking a moment to connect with your body, the person growing inside it. And just taking a moment to acknowledge that a lot of this is happening without your conscious effort. Right? There's definitely care and choosing things that support you as the baby grows almost as much as you. So connecting with them, honoring their growth. And then when you're ready, you can come to all fours. Now for a moment, this is actually like my least favorite <laughs> because everyone teaches it in prenatal yoga. But there's a reason why cat cow right so everyone tends to teach the arching and rounding of your spine go ahead and get a few of those if that feels good but i noticed for my body right away i would start going side to side so give yourself a few up and down side to side a few circles here notice anywhere that feels tender give it a little extra space or maybe back off from it especially when we're arching sometimes that can be an overstretch we don't want to overstretch an area that's already excessively stretched. So a few breaths here, breath being the most important thing, feeling the support of the ground underneath you. Another benefit here. And then just feeling into the sides of your hips, the length of your spine, and anything your body's calling for most in line to. You can take a little time to wrap that up. Our next move is downward facing dog. So you can modify this in any way. You could put your hands on the wall or on a table. Um, I have actually been using, I don't have them, well, I'm not gonna grab them, they're in the corner. I've been using blocks a lot under my hands on their flattest orientation, right? We don't wanna turn them up to level two or three because then they're not stable. But I really liked having my hands just a tiny bit wider, a tiny bit turned out. And you can try those flat blocks under your hands if you like. Remember, you can keep your knees super bent and it'll probably feel good, especially if you're like me later in pregnancy, to take your feet really wide. It makes space for your belly. So with this, I always bring a little motion to start, get some ankle cracks in. And just sweep your attention through your body. Now, there's a lot of fluid in our body during pregnancy, so you might feel like, woo, a little lightheaded, like you need to come down and rest. So you can try coming in and out a few times, or if you've been doing a lot of downward dog throughout your life, you can fold if that feels better. I noticed these little things, like a little hole in my ankle that was never there before I was pregnant, started around six months little weird thing in my thumb. So just take a moment to honor the weird thing. Perhaps a breath of stillness here. Don't worry about what it looks like. Be much more interested in what you're feeling. And then from here we can come down. Now I've actually really enjoyed doing a modified vinyasa. That's like a little push-up. I just like to strengthen my arms. So Full bonus here if you want to, from your knees, lower, perhaps kiss belly right back up. Just makes me feel strong. <laughs> okay, so we have our cat-cow variation, our down dog. 
The next shape in yoga that has felt amazing to me is Prasarita Padottanasana, a wide leg forward fold. So with that one, we stand up, step our feet wide, and then any amount fold forward. Now you see I have a ball over here, you could fold onto the ball, you could fold onto the chair. For my body, the floor is pretty accessible, so I go straight to the floor. And then breathe. The nice thing about down dog and prasarita is they're a little bit of an inversion for your upper body. So you get this reverse in blood flow. Now I know some people get nauseous, dizzy, all kinds of things. It hasn't impacted me personally, but if that impacts you, then just stay upright and move on to your next position. But we do know that inversions going upside down tends to be, have a balancing effect in terms of yoga energetics, in terms of you know, it's not too stimulating or soothing on our nervous system. Forward fold like this may be a little more soothing. But anything that helps bring balance during a time of a lot of change, right, could be a support. So try this one on. And some of you, especially if you've been practicing a long time, you might want to walk your hands back, go a little bit deeper. I just start to notice if I fold too deep, I get that belly on thigh connection that feels uncomfortable. So for me, keeping the length and even a little sway of hips, you start to kind of feel into whatever's going on in there. Wherever your body's adjusting to changes, just giving some love and attention to your hips. I could stay in this for like at least five more minutes, but I won't right now. From here, let's toe heel our feet in nice and wide, so wider than hips distance, toes out, heels in. If your heels don't come all the way down, that's okay. You could put a little wedge or a blanket or something underneath, so you're not pulling at your Achilles. That's not the point here. From here, we're coming into Malasana. Now there's lots of variations of Malasana. I'm gonna invite you to find the angle of your feet and uh, knees that feels good for you today. Okay, so depending on how your body's feeling, what's going on in your pelvis and your hips, how big your belly is today. I know it's not even linear. It's not like it grows day by day. It gets bigger, it gets smaller, it goes all over the place. Depending on what you ate, depending on water, all these things, depending on baby. So find the external rotation that feels good for you today. Some days, more parallel might feel better, especially on your low back or your sacrum. Now what I like to do here is take my arms out and squeeze gently into my arms. That creates a little opening, a little space in my low back and sacral area. And again, like we've done in other shapes, I'll often just sway a little side to side, explore, pushing out, pushing in, perhaps bring a little prayer and then squeeze my elbows. You could close your eyes if you like or roll your neck. Now if at any point this becomes like heavy, uncomfortable, too much pulling, you could also put a block underneath your sit bones in Malasana. Let's take another breath if it's feeling good. And then we'll carefully, with support, make our ways to a seated position. And one of the things I've noticed is transitions this way and that. You don't quite have the same Feeling of stability, I don't at least. Let me scoot back so you can see my feet. Okay, so now I'm coming into Upavishta Konasana. Wide-legged forward fold. <clears throat> Not that different than Prasarita, what we did earlier, just a different orientation to gravity, right? So from here, you can take your hands back behind your hips, flex your feet, point them up, toes and knees up towards the ceiling, just for the sake of evenness in the body, evenness side to side for now. And then sitting nice and tall. I like this one because I can really feel my sit bones in contact with the floor. 
Now, if you're not feeling that, if you're feeling back on your sacrum, I encourage you to sit up on a pillow or a couple of blankets or towels until you can feel that sit bone contact underneath. It doesn't have to be a hard contact, just the sense that you're aligning on top of those ischial tuberosities, right? <laughs> Here's a bone. Reason being, when we're thinking about preparing for labor, super helpful to be able to breathe in this position or any other and feel the connection all the way down to the pelvic floor. And when we feel those sit bones, we can even imagine them moving with our breath. You might even feel a little motion if you inhale fully all the way down, you might feel a little bit of movement in your pelvis. That's great, fine if you do, but if you don't, it's very subtle. You can also just imagine it. So we tend to focus a lot these days on breathing in and out through our nose. Lots of value in that. Lots of value as well, especially if you're feeling tension, to get it out, let it go, allow yourself to sigh. Okay, so from this Upavisha, you can stay with those deep belly pelvic floor breaths. You could also just even a tiny amount invoke a forward fold, invite that aspect in if it feels good. Now, probably I'm like two centimeters from my belly touching the floor here. So I'll probably stop right around here and just take a couple breaths. Now I feel a nice stretch in the back of my legs and the back of my ankle, especially that little weird twingy one I told you about on the left side that's been there for a few months now. I feel a nice sense of circulation, opening, release. So that's what we're looking for here. We're not going for something that's really intense or pulling our pelvis one way or the other. We're more going for that equanimity and balance, that middle ground. So let's take a couple more breaths here. And slowly exhaling forward, walking back in. I like to complement my upavishta with a little diamond shape in my legs. You might feel baddha konasana. This diamond could be really big and wide with your feet far forward. It could be hugged in, just depending on what feels best for your body. Somewhere in the middle is where I'm at today. And just an inhale to lengthen. And again, if you can feel those sit bones, if not, maybe a little more height if you're feeling rocked back. Build that height until you can sit tall. Breathing straight up and down. And when I say breathing straight up and down, we're breathing this way, yeah, going down into the pelvic floor, down to the sit bones, but it's really a 360 breath, right? Opening front back body, opening top to bottom, opening front to back, all directions. Front back, front side, up, down. Breathing in and out through your nose or mouth, especially if you want that extra release. You could add a little <coughs> to relax your jaw. There's also that jaw pelvic floor connection, right? Where with this, this is punching, everything else punches. So inviting that softness like we practice so often in yoga. Your eyes, your jaw, your tongue, your throat. Noticing too, if you do feel that translate down into your body, down into your pelvic floor or hips. A couple more breaths here, no surprise. I'm gonna take a little motion because my neck wants to roll. I have not been so into the really static stuff since I've been pregnant. I've been much more interested in the little micro movements my body's calling for connecting with that intuitive response to motion. Which I'm told can really serve during labor. Just to be connected to your body's intuitive knowing, your body's yearning for movement and giving that full permission going with it. Okay. 
So we're going to wrap up our practice with a final rest. Um, often, traditionally, that's Shavasana. Now, if you're early in your pregnancy, you might feel fine lying down on your back. If you're, I don't know, six months, exactly when that change happens, it feels uncomfortable, or you're concerned about being on your back at all, then we have options, right? I like to sit in Shavasana with my heels in alignment. Now, I'm at the point, oh, maybe she's dropping. Everybody keeps telling me that. I'm like, she's dropping, she's dropping. I'm like, maybe, I don't know. She's getting bigger. Uh, but I am at the point where my belly is really close to my heels. So if that's uncomfortable for you, you can cross your legs um, more in like a, what do you call this? Fire log or Sukhasana, one chin in front of the other. That might be a big pull in your hips. If that's the case, you could sit up on some height, but it leaves perhaps a little more room. Now let's also give permission to be somewhere in between where it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be an official yoga shape. You can just find what works for you. Okay. Oh, 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 my favorite thing. Sorry, one more thing before we finish. We're gonna take hands back behind if you have like a chair. This is actually kind of perfect. You can prop yourself on it or lean against a wall. This has been my favorite. Oh, I can't believe I almost skipped it. Feet wide, gently taking knees to one side and back the other way. Ooh, yeah. So I had a fall on my bike last year, and there's these little pockets in my left hip that still feels like a little tension or maybe it's scar tissue or residual impact there. And so I notice that the internal rotation is where I feel it. So right now we're alternating, externally rotating one leg, internally rotating the other. This is a safe way to get a little tiny twist in your spine, a twist in your legs. It's also a good way to move through internal and external rotation in your legs. Now, if you wanted to, you could go external, internal, and there's a lot of talk about in delivery, right, if you're giving vaginal birth, how you move your legs impacting the orientation of your pelvis, right? So that's a whole world of learning. But the more we start to explore these movements, the more we can trust intuitively what our body's doing, and we've also prepped our body gently to move in different ways, right? To externally rotate, to internally rotate, just to get more comfortable in both of those. Now in yoga, and we just did this earlier, we do a lot of external rotation. We do some neutral stuff. We don't do a lot of internal. So one thing I love, and you can try this on, <clears throat> see how it works for you, is feet wide, knees together. Now you're going to need to make some space for the belly, especially if you're further along like me. And you could have your knees apart or together, leaning on each other. That could look a lot of different ways. So again, less what it looks like, more what it feels like. I'm inspired to bring a little motion to this one too, but you could hold it. I notice like inner thigh, even like a little hip flexor, just some really interesting things happening in my legs and hips when I do this. All right, so let's do some full cycles side to side to wrap that up. And then just shake it out. Okay, now we can come to that closing seat. Or if you want to lie down, you can do left side tends to be preferred um, for pregnancy. Left or right side, whatever's more comfortable for you. We do tend to call the left the yin side. So if you're feeling that need for nourishment or for support in your digestion, kind of gravity goes with the orientation of the large intestine, more on our left side. For me, lying on my side, I gotta do it all night. <laughs> I just don't wanna do it anymore. So I've been closing my practice, either recline on some bolsters and blocks, or if you happen to have a couch right behind you like this, you can find a nice little pseudo shavasana where you're supported. 
but I've also been really enjoying just a meditative seat. So find your comfortable meditative seat. Take a few moments, my eyes close very quickly. I really enjoy that. You might notice that your eyes want to stay open, you can rest them on a point. If you prefer, you can allow them to close. And let's just take a moment here to open to possibility. There's so much possibility in a new life, right? A new human whose feet have yet to touch the earth, whose voice we haven't heard yet, whose eyes we haven't looked into yet. And with unknown, sometimes it's easy to get fearful or concerned or protective. Let's make sure we're also making room for the wonder of that possibility, for the hope in that possibility, perhaps the hope for health, for connection, for laughter, for joy. Let's just make sure to leave space for that. Ever since I got pregnant, I've had this thought of the first time or some of the early times that this child will laugh or smile at me. You know, you might have been three months pregnant, I might have been five months pregnant, and I would just be going through a wishing tunnel while driving and just have an image of this child laughing with me. You know, sharing a laugh. Sharing a smile, sharing an exchange. And everyone says, the love you've never known. Just allowing a little bit of possibility around, ooh, hi, <laughs> someone's moving, around those positive experiences of connection, of love. A yoga teacher friend of mine said, Everyone says, oh, get your sleep, and oh, everything's going to change so much. And she just said, it's so much better with my child in my life. Like, I would hands down choose it every day. So cool to have this person in my life. So leaving some space for that. Leaving some space for the wonder, the possibility, the love, the care, the connection inviting that in and maybe even allowing it to amplify. We'll close here with just a couple easy breaths. Perhaps hands on belly. You might get a little hello underneath them as I'm getting right now. Hey babe, it's your first yoga video. <laughs> First of many, perhaps. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. So many possibilities. And let's close in a way that's meaningful. I'll bring my hands together at my heart. Take a few breaths. If your eyes are closed. You can flutter them open as you're ready. Just take a moment to honor yourself for exploring a yoga practice for continuing a yoga practice, for building a human inside your body. Coolest thing ever. So cool. And take a moment to notice any positive shift that's come from the short practice, any insight, any relief, any clearing, any connection or possibility. Just letting that sink in with a full breath in and a full breath out. Thank you for sharing this short practice with me. I hope you can take these postures and run with them. Find your favorites. Continue to practice however it serves you. That might be walking. That might be qigong. That might be downward dog. Um, but whatever it is, I wish you and your baby well. And thanks so much. Bye-bye. Turn off.